Well, welcome. Thank you for being here. Congrats on making it to the final round of sessions of the conference. Um, hopefully you're not too tired and ready to keep up the energy for another few hours and hopefully at the social tonight as well. Um, my name is Sydney. If I haven't met you, I use she, her pronouns and I am one of the PMs on the PowerShell team. And today we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, private galleries. I have a few slides here. I want this to be demo heavy. I want this to be instructional so you can leave, you know, ready to go set something up when you get um, out of here. And I want this to be kind of like tailored to what you all want to learn. So um, be ready to give me feedback and what direction you want to go. Um, but first, so we're all on the same page here. Um, I like to st start off this kind of session with defining a few terms because there have been some changes in the way we talk about things. We've introduced a few new terms in this gallery package management space in PowerShell recently. So for a while, we've, we've talked about PowerShell Get. So PowerShell Get is the module that you probably all know and love. Um, probably all used it before, even if you don't know it. Um, if you've ever run install module, update module, find module, publish module, you've used PowerShell Get. Um, Built-in module in PowerShell. In Windows PowerShell, you got V1. That's the one that ships inbox. It's kind of broken. It's kind of a pain to upgrade. Um, you got V2. That's the one that ships inbox in PowerShell 7. Um, so when we talk about PowerShell get V1, V2, that is the module that we are talking about. Um, a few years ago, we announced this big project, this big rewrite we were going to do. We were going to rewrite, and we were going to do PowerShell get V3. And what we were going to do is rewrite PowerShell get v2 and fix everything, right? There was <laughs> a bunch of architectural challenges um, with the way that v2 was originally written. It had taken some dependencies on some old packages that we weren't able to rewrite and take over. So we said, screw it, we'll write it from scratch and we'll do it right this time. So we, we took on this kind of ambitious project of rewriting PowerShell get. And when we did that, um, one of the things we did is we said, we have this goal of, of not just taking care of PowerShell modules and scripts, but we want to take care of more generalized resources. So that was one goal. Um, we also wanted to simplify the commandlet interface. Um, and we had, we had a number of other goals around performance, security, trust, all these sorts of things. And so when we did this, we, we, we looked at the commandlet interface and we started calling things instead of um, having a different commandlet for installing modules and a commandlet for installing scripts and a commandlet for installing DSC resources. We combined those all into one commandlet and called it install PS resource. So we have install PS resource, find PS resource. And for a while, we were calling this project PowerShell get v3. And as we got closer to shipping PowerShell get v3 inbox in PowerShell 7, we got a little nervous because we said, what's going to happen when we ship this in PowerShell 7, and every CI, CI, CD system upgrades their PowerShell get, and every single one breaks in the world. Um, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, right? <laughs> um, so we ended up, there was a lot more discussion around this. I can link you to GitHub issues or talk to you more about this if you wanna dig more into the, the, the long discussion around this. Long story short, we ended up renaming the module to Power, PS resource get. So that's where the name PS resource get comes, comes from. We ended up deciding this is so different, it's its own module. But then what happens to, to PowerShell get and PowerShell get three, right? Does, what happens there? So what we decided to do is not fully abandon the PowerShell get v3 project, but instead um, take this project we had also done, which is compat PowerShell get. As we've been building PS resource get, we had also been building a compatibility layer. It's a, sh a shim that translates the v2 syntax to the v3 implementation, right? So I run install module, under the hood it's calling install PS resource. So we've been shipping that, we started shipping that as previews that we're calling PowerShell get v3. So those are kind of the terms at this point. PowerShell get v3, what is it? It's really a compatibility layer. It's the v2 syntax, but under the hood, on the engine, is this PS, new PS resource get thing. PS resource get first shipped inbox in PowerShell 7.4, which is GA'd. In November, PS resource get 1.0 GA this past October. And then we've got V2 and V1 of PowerShell get. So those are that's the landscape we're looking at when we're talking about the kind of key modules um, in the package management landscape in PowerShell today. So 
this talk is about private galleries. Um, a lot of times, I think when we think about um, these modules, we think about the PowerShell gallery. But a big focus of PS Resource Get was actually enabling a better private gallery experience today. So the question is like, why did, why did you guys do this? Why do you care about this? These are the reasons why you should care about private galleries and why we as the PowerShell team care about private galleries. Um, the first one is, uh, well the first and the last one go hand in hand, um, but they're a little bit different. So the first is um, security reasons. Um, the PowerShell gallery is an untrusted repository. I, I, if, you could t if you only take home one thing from this session, let it be that the PowerShell gallery is an untrusted repository by default. So if you've ever installed a module and you get the prompt, are you sure you want to install this module? This repository is untrusted, that's not a bug. That's because the repository is untrusted by default. There's very limited scanning that is done on packages in the PowerShell gallery, um, right? And so if I'm in an enterprise, if I am even on my machine, I want to know what I'm installing, I want to know what I'm running. Private galleries give me security because I know what is in my gallery, right? And I can set up whatever security I, scanning I want or I feel comfortable with. I can set up whatever security boundaries around my private gallery that I feel comfortable with that are appropriate for my enterprise or my scenario. I can set up whatever auth, level of auth requirements are appropriate for me and my modules, right? It's gonna look different depending on where you are. So you can, you can kind of customize the auth needs to, to your environment, um, the process for what it takes for a module to get in, all those sorts of things. Um, second is availability. Um, I know this one kind of can be a dagger to the heart for some people. PowerShell Gallery does not have any SLAs, right? Um, and what, so what does that mean? What is an SLA? It's a service level agreement. Um, so that usually means like, you know, when you're paying for a service, you have some sort of agreement. We're gonna be up 99.99% of the time. PowerShell Gallery is not a paid service. It's a community resource. It doesn't have any of those types of agreements. I would love to like, on a personal level, promise you that like the PowerShell Gallery would, will always be up. And like our dev team, like w fights tooth and nail to keep that thing up. But at the end of the day, I cannot make a legal agreement to you or a legal guarantee to you that the PowerShell gallery will be available for you when you critically need that module. So what do pri private galleries guarantee for you? They're cash for you so that you have the module you need when you need it, right? Um, third one, privacy. This one I think is pretty straightforward, but like not all modules belong in public, right? I think we all understand that one. Um, performance. Running a fine module against your 100 modules in the, your private gallery is gonna be a lot faster than running a find operation against the hundreds of thousands of modules in the PowerShell gallery. You know, things like that matter too. Um, and then trust we talked about, but um, I'll say a big concern on the PowerShell gallery is spoofing attacks. Um, so that's a, that's a attack vector that you should be thinking about when you are looking at a module on the gallery. Um, is, can I trust that this module is from who they say it's from? We, we're, we have plans in place to kind of improve that. Um, and I'll be talking more about that later in the presentation. I'm not, I'm not saying this, all, this is all on you that we're not taking this, these concerns seriously as well. But I want you to be thinking about these things. These are things why you might care about having your own private gallery. Um, okay, so what did we support in PS Resource Get 1.0? Um, so these are a few of the um, new feeds that we added explicit support for in PS Resource Get 1.0. Again, this GA back in October. Um, so for ADO feeds, um, this is like Azure Artifacts feeds, we have public and private support, and we have V2 and V3 support, so both endpoints. Um, we added support for NuGet Gallery. Little tricky thing to note there is um, that it's gonna install, there's a bug right now where it's gonna install your NuGet 
packages as PowerShell modules. So that'll work better hopefully in the future. But Artifactory supported, um, again, V2 and V3. That's JFrog is also what it's called. Uh, GitHub packages, again, public and private is supported. And then MyGet is another um, repository that's supported. There are other things like file shares and what's not that's supported. I um, included a link to this doc. I'm going to show it. Um, Sean, who's in, in the back row here, is our wonderful docs writer, put together this really awesome doc. Highly recommend checking it out. It's in our docs section under PS Resource or under um, PowerShell Get and PowerShell Gallery have their own doc set now. So if you go there and you go under um, manage, oh wait, let's see. That's where it is, right? Yeah, manage PowerShell packages. Um, PS resource gets supported repositories is the name of the article. Search that, you'll be able to find it. Um, but anyways, you scroll through this, it's gonna tell you for each repository type exactly what is supported, limitations, how to publish, that. So highly recommend checking out that doc and I'll be showing some of these today as well. <coughs> um, but one thing I do, want to know as well, while we're at it, let's look at this, let's go get them. Um, if you, this is our lovely GitHub repo. Um, this is where all the work gets done. Um, anyways, if you saw that list and you said, hey, there's actually a repository that I love to use that wasn't on that list, it, it might work. It might just work. It just means that we haven't tested against it, right? So if there's something you want to try against, go ahead and try it and let us know if it works, right? And then go ahead and just open an issue and tell us whether or not it worked. Um, and then we have a label that we're tracking requests for new repository support. Um, and kind of the general rule of thumb is like, hey, if it gets enough ups, we'll add it. Um, we, we do have, you know, to prioritize work and whatnot. You can see a, a tag here. Um, but we all also are accepting PRs um, if that's something you feel compelled to do. There was something else I think I was gonna show here. No, I think we're good. Um, any questions at this point before I keep going? No, okay, we're good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'll show that. Um, or I'll just talk about to that point really quick. So um, I was gonna show, if you aren't familiar with PS Resource Get or you haven't started using it, a great starting place would be um, this blog for the GA release just because it links to the documentation and um, other things, but um, it also has a little section here that I think is just great that I wrote. Isn't that great? Um, uh, other, hand <laughs> other handy features to know about. And I reference this because sometimes I forget little handy features that we added. Um, anyways, um, so one of the things is that we added as a new feature in PS Resource Get is a notion of repository priority. Um, so this explains basically how the system works and there's some documentation on it as well. But yeah, it's a great question. Um, we did add that as a, as a new feature in this release as well. Um, I just wanted to touch on this. I'm not gonna spend too long on this. Um, uh, but just the notion of like challenges to supporting various feeds, I think, um, sometimes, you know, the question starts to roll in. Why not this feed? Why not this feed? Why not this feed? Um, and I think when we started this project, I was kind of like, kind of on that bandwagon too. I was like, let's just support every feed there is. Um, and I thought, you know, once we support NuGet v2 feeds, won't we support all the NuGet v2 feeds? And like NuGet v2 endpoints, and like once we support all the NuGet v3, new, support NuGet v3 endpoints, won't they just all work? Um, and it turns out that that's like not totally the case. Um, we started out by supporting, you know, PowerShell Gallery, of course. Um, that was what we had by default. PowerShell Gallery is a NuGet v2 endpoint. You go and you're like, okay, so then other NuGet v2 endpoints, they should work, right? No, no, they don't. 
Um, there's a lot of differences in like the type, the way the metadata is um, returned across different types of V2 endpoints. Um, you know, then we went and did ADO, and we thought, oh, okay, ADO works now. You know, Artifactory is just going to work. And no, once we did ADO, Artifactory didn't just work. Um, so there was a lot of variation in response format in the way metadata was returned, um, and this was um, made for some tough decisions as to like how we were going to support various features um, and how to support dependencies. Um, and I would say another big challenge for us has actually been standing up tests in CI for various repositories. And this is because a lot of these repositories are paid offerings. And um, so like we, for example, like every time I want to test something against Artifactory, JFrog, I have to like make a trial account and then test against that. And you can't really do that in CI. So um, trying to get long-standing accounts has been a difficult challenge for us across these various paid repository types that are outside of Microsoft. Um, okay, cool. One last slide before we. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think so because. Um, like I try and contact them, but if I'm contacting them, I think it probably weights different than if you're asking for that type of support. Yeah. Um, so one other feature we added to um, PS Resource Get around support for private galleries was um, credential persistence. And the way we did this was through integration with the secret management module. Um, the reason we did this is because we weren't gonna create a new secret vault to store these credentials. Um, and so we wanted to use something that already existed. We also wanted a way for users to use whatever secret vault they wanted to use. So if you wanted to store your, your uh, credentials for your vault, say in Azure Key Vault, you could do that. If you want to store them in Secret Store, you can do that. If you want to store them in LastPass, you can do that. Um, so integration with secret management made the most sense in this case, because then we could have a generic way without knowing um, the end vault of the user. So I'll show how to set this up as well. But um, with that, we can hop into our first little demo sesh. So got my terminal. Can everyone see this OK? We're good. I, I changed to a light theme just for you guys because I hear that that's you know, what shows up best on screen. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is our first, very first what I'll do, is I'll just do a GMO so you can see what I have loaded in my session. Some of this stuff will come into play later, but the main thing I want to point out is PS, Power, Microsoft .powershell .ps resource get. That is the module that we're going to be playing with today. Um, if you check out the version, I'm on 1.1 one, one preview 1. This was released last week. This is our very latest version. So after the GA in October, we've continued with patch releases and preview releases. I'll be talking about what's in the preview release after this demo set. So this demo set um, is going to be mostly focused on, it's going to be focused on what we've talked up to so far. But just so you know, we're continuing development. And that's what we've got loaded right now. So if I do. Um, get PS resource repository. I can see all the repositories I have loaded and their URIs. So we have the two ACR demo repositories. I believe those were demoed in the state of the shell, but we'll be talking more about those. And then you can see some of the other types of repositories I have registered right now. So we have like an ADO public feed, an ADO v2 feed, an ADO v3 feed, um, a GitHub packages feed, a JFrog feed, and then we have PowerShell gallery. So I'm going to show how to register and set up credentials with um, one of these. Um, does anyone have a preference as to like what we show? I can show multiple. It just gets kind of repetitive because you're just pulling, you know, you're doing the same thing. But um, does anyone have a preference as to like what type of repository we demo with? GitHub. Okay, sure. So I can show. You can also you can actually play at home with this one, I believe. Well, I think. Okay, so this is PowerShell Teams um, GitHub 
packages feed. We've got these test modules in here loaded. Um, and so this is where you go. Oh, I'm going to sign into my GitHub account. There we go. Um, OK, great. So we've got our four packages here. So I am going to register PS resource repository. That is the commandlet. Um, name is going to be a friendly name. So I'm doing like just calling it GH. You can see the URI right here. Um, the docs go over how to construct the URI because it's not totally intuitive for GitHub packages, but basically the, the, the way you construct a NuGet feed, it's just this nuget.package.github.com and then PowerShell, that's the name of the package feed and then index.json. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then I am going to use the force parameter. So force is a new parameter we added to, P to register PS resource repository. Um, and so this is kind of handy because you might be on a system where you don't know if the repository is registered or not, and you just want it to work. So that's kind of nice. So we have that registered. You'll notice that I didn't provide credentials. I could have provided credentials um, at this time, um, but I can also set them later on. So um, if I wanted to do a find, let's do a find. PS resource, let's see, test module is the name of what's in here. So we've got test module. Um, specify the repository, GH, credential, and I'm gonna do a get secret call. Um, and I'm gonna pass in my secret. I'll show you how we got that in a second. Oh no, sad, that was not my secret. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So I was like, I think this is, this is it, right? Okay. There we go, yeah, thank you. So you can see that it returned um, there. So simple demo, but we'll show how to um, set up credential persistence and also get the credential. Um, with that, um, I just showed a few secret management um, items. Do we want a quick demo on secret management or are people familiar with that? Who wants a demo on secret management? Okay, okay, cool. That's great. Um, okay, so secret manner. Um, I need to do module. Does that work? Or is it module name? It's module. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, all right, so this is the commandlet interface for the module um, that we call secret management. Um, all secret management is, is an interface for, a common interface for getting and setting secrets and for registering secret vaults. That's all it is. Um, without secret vaults registered, it does nothing for you, okay? So that's the, the key thing. What you need is a secret vault. Um, if we go to, um, Let's go to the PowerShell gallery. Um, search like tag secret management. You can see all the different vaults will show up. See there's like Azure Key Vault, Secret Store, bunch of other vaults, right? So these are vaults you can install and register with um, secret management and use. I'll show you how to use Secret Store just for the purposes of this demo because 
This isn't a secret management session, but you can get more information on secret management elsewhere. So what is Secret Store? Secret Store is um, a local vault owned and supported by the PowerShell team. It's built on the .NET cryptographic APIs, and it's supported everywhere PowerShell 7 is supported. Um, well, everywhere PowerShell in general is supported, because it's also supported down to PowerShell 5. Um, cool, so if you install that, um, so once I have that module installed as well, what I'll just do is register secret vault. Um, there, you can see that I was registering keychain a keychain vault because I was debugging it the other day. Um, register secret vault name is going to be a friendly name. I called it like SS secret store, and then I believe you provide the module name. Yeah, module name. And so the module name is Microsoft Secret Store, or PowerShell Secret Store. Um, and then you're good to go. And then once you have that, um, you can go ahead and start having fun. So get secret info is going to display secret metadata. So it's gonna show your vault name, your type, and your name. So this is considered non-sensitive information. Um, and this is your secret metadata. And then if you do get, do like get secret, um, let's do, I wanna show you, let's do this. I just want to show you that like by default, even though this is a string, it's always going to splat out as a secure string. So um, anyways, then you can use start using, like in your script, you can start using get secret calls, right? So that you don't have to put your, uh, you can see all the ways you can use get secret when you need an API key or whatever. Cool. <laughs> I use it a lot. Um, it's just a handy little tool. So um, something to use, something to know, but if you want more information, feel free to talk to me later, look at the docs or that sort of thing. Um, cool, so that's what we're playing with with secret management. Um, with GitHub, let's go back to GitHub. Okay, so we're gonna go here. Okay, so this is where you're gonna get your personal access token. This is what you need for GitHub packages right now. So this is where you're gonna set up your key. Once you have your key, you're going to create a PS credential object with it. Um, and then you're going to use set secret to create your cred here. So like you'll do set secret, GH cred or whatever, right? With your vault. Cool, so now we have that. So if I do um, get secret info, what did we call it, GH cred. Um, there we go. That's what the object we need. So we, you have that created, right? So now what I'm going to give uh, PS resource get is simply a pointer to um, that secret, right? So what I need is the secret name and the secret vault name, okay? So that secret, in fact, doesn't actually need to be created when you register the, the vault. Um, but it's gonna need to be there when PS resource get goes to access the vault, right? So you need a pointer um, is what you're providing. So if we go to set, um, PS resource, this is a good example. Okay, so now we can set PS resource repository, we're gonna set the GH GitHub, and then we're gonna provide credential info. And so what we need to provide is a vault name, our vault name is secret store, so, or SS, so we're providing that, um, and then the secret name 
GH cred, right? So this is not the secret, right? This is a pointer to the secret, where the secret is stored. It's the vault. So that could also be remote, right? That, right? In this case, it's secret store, but that you could be pointing to your remote key vaults or whatever, okay? Make sense? Um, okay, so now if we do the find call again, we don't need to provide the credential because it's already been provided at the repository level, right? So I can close out my PowerShell session as many times as I want. I never need to provide that again until you know the token expires or whatever, and then it needs to be reset, and that's handled separately. Um, does that make sense? Got it? Any questions about any of that? Do we want to see any other repositories um, registered, set up, hit against anything at this point, or do we want to move on to, to keep going? Prompt will keep going? Okay, cool. Okay, so we, we've alluded to this, we've talked about this, but what's next? So what's next for the PowerShell, or for PS Resource Get that we've now um, released in 1.1 Preview 1 is this concept of container registries as private galleries. Um, and so one thing I really wanna drive home is that um, these are not containers. They're modules in container registries, right? So we're, we took this concept of an OCI artifact with a known metadata schema and we abstracted it so that it, we could use it with um, NUP kegs. And what are NUP kegs? NUP kegs are just zip files essentially, right? And so we, we took this idea and we applied it to modules, scripts, and DSC resources. Um, so these are, this will feel, this should feel like any other repository. You, you shouldn't have to feel like you're using a container registry, right? Um, these are not containers, they're, they're modules, um, and they should feel as such. Um, one thing to note is right now, only ACR is supported. If you're wondering why, why can't I use it with any container registry? Um, the reason is that ORAS, ORAS is the, the language, so to speak, for interacting with container registries, um, doesn't have good .NET support. Doesn't have good .NET support at the moment. And um, we're hoping that that will be there in the future. Um, and so for now, we had to call directly into the ACR repositories. We're hoping that changes in the future so that we can, um, our goal is to generally support container registries. Um, but right now, um, we had to call directly into the ACR APIs. Um, so ACR, Azure Container Registry. Um, and you might be wondering, like, why, why would you do this? Like, why is this different than any of the other types of repositories um, you've talked about so far? And um, in a lot of ways, it's similar, right? Like, if you're not an Azure user, maybe you don't care. If you're really comfortable in your artifactory thing and it's working for you, I'll always say, like, rock on. Like, I'm not going to try and sell this to you, but for some folks, um, this meets a need, right? Um, so there's some cool scenarios that I think are pretty exciting. One is um, the fact that Defender um, runs in ACR. Um, and so we're working with the Defender team to set up support for continuous PowerShell script scanning. So I think that could be a really great security um, scenario. Um, another one is uh, we have, which I'll be showing, um, integration with Entra ID and the Azure Identity SDK. Um, so that whole secret management credential thing that I just showed you, you don't actually have to worry about with ACR because we just handle um, authentication like we would with Azure PowerShell or any other Azure application. Um, and so that's really nice. Um, and we can kind of take advantage of all your access controls and things that you already might have if you're already in Azure. There's another really big scenario too um, that I think is important, which is that we're also going to be using MAR, which is Microsoft Artifact Registry for first party support. Um, so what the story is there is Microsoft Artifact Registry is a trusted repository for Microsoft owned artifacts. It is well supported and exists today. And so we are gonna be having the Azure PowerShell team 
um, along with other Microsoft owned modules, including the PowerShell team modules. In addition to publishing on the PowerShell gallery, also publish on MAR. So that there is a trusted, verified source for their modules. Um, and so what's cool is that, what is MAR? MAR is just an unauthenticated ACR instance. Um, and MAR has like upstream caching support for ACR. So MAR can be your upstream source for your ACR instance. Um, so we kind of needed to support um, ACR for this MAR scenario. Um, the reason why we're doing this is really we've had a number of spoofing cases related to Microsoft um, packages on the PowerShell gallery, and we wanted a really robust, well-supported scenario. Um, and MAR already, already existed. Um, you know, there's a whole team that runs it, um, and so we wanted to take advantage of that instead of trying to reinvent the wheel um, within our own team. So that's kind of a high-level story of what we're looking at. Um, I think package trust is, is a really big theme, and security is a really big theme of like why we're why we care about this, why we're doing all of this. But I think what's interesting is it, what you end up having is these tiers of galleries. So I want I want to emphasize the PowerShell gallery going nowhere, like PowerShell gallery, like it's not it's not going anywhere. Like it will continue to exist. Um, but we also want to create a trusted source of repository. So I will I in the future I see, I have a vision that. PowerShell Gallery will be community resources. You'll have MAR for Microsoft Trusted Repository, and you might have other enterprises set up container registries for their own trusted repositories that can all be like federated into container registry instances. Um, and you then have your own private gallery to cache those down. That's kind of like the vision long term that I see around galleries. But over the short term, what you can expect is to see like AZ team has plans to start publishing into MAR. We're going to work down this path because we have gotten a lot of spoofing attacks. Um, and PowerShell Gallery will continue to be there. And we're, we're working on that as well. Um, cool. We have a few more minutes. So I just want to show the um, ACR experience, even though I think it was shown a little bit um, already. But if you haven't seen what ACR looks like. Um, I will say too, Sean also wrote a really great doc set on ACR already, um, and we're working on more. Um, this is what a container registry looks like in the portal view. Um, you can create these using Azure PowerShell. You can also create it in the portal, CLI, any way you create Azure resources. This is my temporary um, one that I spun up just for this conference. Um, but you can kind of just see what it looks like. Um, so they're called repositories here. And then you can see I have a couple of test scripts that I've um, registered into here. I'm going to go to my Windows terminal um, just because I haven't authenticated on this box yet. So you can see the authentication flow. Um, this is integrated with the Azure Identity SDK. So any of the nine or 11 or whatever ways you can authenticate into Azure, you can do here so that it's like, you can do um, the unattended kind of ways, or you can do the interactive flows as well. Um, you can do connect AZ, that also works. Um, in this case, I have already registered my ACR instance. If we should go like, let's say like that, I, that was what I ran to register. So you're just gonna need the name, friendly name, and then the um, login server is the URI if we go back to the overview page. This is where you can copy the login server information. That's where you get the URI. Um, if I go back here, um, and then I run a find call against my ACR instance, and I'm not authenticated. It will prompt me <laughs> with my Microsoft login, and I'm not going to log in right now. But um, basically, it, it goes through this flow that you may have seen before. Um, if you're in a different tenant, you can log in kind of that way. But I would choose you know, my account and log in. Um, and then I would be logged in for the duration um, of the time set 
at the tenant level. Um, so on here, if we go back, I did get PS resource repository. You can see that I had a few um, ACR instances or two ACR instances. So I'm just gonna show um, like a find instance against one of them. I think, oh wait, no, it was. No, oh, that's, out. Oh. Huh. There we go. So you can see, just like a t typical find like you would otherwise. Um, name. It's in ACR. So um, I have about five minutes left. So I'm just going to talk briefly about like just like wrap up things. Um, so how to track the project, how to keep following this. Um, definitely follow the team on the depth blog site. I always post a blog when we release. So um, if you want to track there, if you're like really interested in tracking us, like want to know like, is my issue going to get solved? Like, what are you guys working on? Um, our team like really heavily uses the projects feature in GitHub. So you can like see, so we just released this, this like last week, you can see like, oh, sorry, all of our, th these were the issues that went into that release. But um, you can see we're starting to build out the next preview here. And you'll see we meet three days a week and adjust the board. So um, it gets updated very frequently. If you ever have issues, don't hesitate to open them. Um, we want them. So please do. And um, happy to answer any questions. Hopefully that give, gave a little overview of like what you can expect from galleries. You can leave with some ideas of what to do, but um, more than happy to answer any questions. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. With uh, the ACRs, um, is there any way of uh, authenticating to that with a managed identity or from like, a system identity so that? you have like a DSC that's running and you're trying to pull out DSC resources from that, you know, ACR instances, the, the computer account able to actually pull that on the land. That's a really good question. So we were talking with um, the machine config team about this specifically, and I am not an expert on the different types of identity, so I would need to get back to you on that. I know that in our CI, we have to use the workload federation identity. Um, but I would be really interested in the scenario around DSC. I think that that makes a lot of sense to me. I just don't know for 100% sure um, where, like, if that's supported yet or not. Um, but I think that that's a really interesting scenario. Yeah. So you were using the Azure identity? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Then there you go. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Is there a plan for the gallery team or the repository team to like maybe allow like a manufacturer to say, "Hey, this is my ACR URL. So if I wanted to publish like all of our trusted repos from our trusted repos, so there's one list people could go to to find all of those." Yeah, I think that that's a really good idea. Yeah, I don't know like how exactly we, I think yes, I think, yeah, registry of registries. I'm going to, I'm going to say, let's follow up on that. I think that that's the goal. I don't know. I don't have a solid plan on how to accomplish that yet. I don't know if that looks like a docs page. I don't know if that looks like a repository. I don't know if that looks like a repository itself with forward links, you know what I mean? Or like Shaw's. 
Um, but I'm gonna say yes. I think one thing I didn't touch on that we're also working on in the gallery, public gallery is namespacing, and I think those are adjacent concepts. They're not the same, but they're adjacent concepts. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like that idea a lot, yeah. Yeah. Is there any advice on whether to like have a separate ACR or just PowerShell, or can I mix with like my ISA modules and everything else, and then how does that separation occur? I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't mix. The thing is, uh, PS resource get expects a certain schema, so it will only be able to find and install, you know, PowerShell resources. Um, I don't foresee any issues though with mixing types within an ACR instance. Yeah, it'd be cool though if it could just. Do you is there any front end? Like you have you know, PowerShell, PowerShell, like what about private? Um, I don't think on a private gallery level, we, we've taken some feedback to the ACR team directly about how to improve their UI, if that makes sense. Um, there's been more asks around like a better front end experience around MAR, and I think that might be something we would explore, but I think on like the private gallery feed, it would be more of like feedback to the ACR team, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, of course. No, so I don't, the gallery we are doing like backend updates um, in terms of like we're just updating the old infrastructure just to like improve it, but we're not moving it onto an ACR instance, if that makes sense. Yeah. What about doing V3? <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is like a common question. Um, there could be a time and place where we add a new V3 endpoint. The thing is, we can't get rid of the NuGet v2 endpoint because of all the old Windows machines that only support, so like PowerShell get v2 and below um, only support NuGet v2 endpoints. And there's God knows how many of those in the world. Um, and so it would be maintaining two endpoints to add a v3 endpoint to the PowerShell gallery. So I'm not saying it wouldn't happen or wouldn't be worth it. It just hasn't bubbled up high enough priority to our team. Um, yeah. But it's a possibility. 